Hello, and welcome to Yarn Joy podcast attempt number two. I'm still not sure I'll be able to do the editing, and that is why I put all the info in the um, on the felt board. So hopefully you know where to find me. I am Rachel Lee Book Girl on Instagram and plain Rachel Lee on Ravelry, although I'm not on there very often. Um, this is the Yarn Joy podcast, episode two. It's Sunday, October 28th. I'm wearing a store-bought sweater and the Scassel Holy Scarf that I made a while ago. It is really perfect for this weather because it's kind of decorative but not incredibly warm, although I'm gonna take it off because it is definitely still too warm here to wear additional woolen accessories. So, um, but this is a great pattern. Um, it took a while because it was on fingering. I don't remember the exact yarn, but you can see it's just a really beautiful, interesting pattern. I saw it when I was on vacation two summers ago in Cape Cod and one of the knit stores had a sample of it done in another color and it looked so interesting and artsy that I thought it would make a really fun knit and it did. So maybe at some point I'll make some for friends, that was the intention, but I have not um, gotten around to that yet. So one of the things that podcasters tend to say, um, at least the ones that I watch, is that podcasting does make you feel a bit of you know fire in your belly to get stuff done there is this pressure to have some fo's and i guess that is actually true i um, took something that had been almost finished that i had left um, unattended for quite a while especially because it was so warm here and this is a pretty heavy project. Um, it is Hohi Locatelli's Hipster Shawl, which I think a million people have done. Um, I did it in Madeline Tosh. Um, let me just double check. Um, I did make show notes this time, so I'm not flying by the seat of my pants quite as much. Um, it's Tosh Vintage in Fatal Attraction. And it is really pretty. I thought the fringe uh, took a lot longer than I expected to put it on, but I think this is really a stunning, um, stunning shawl. Um, it could be worn, you know, kind of over your shoulders, like I like to wear things at school, um, but I think it would also be really cool worn that quarter of scarf style um, with the fringe and those holes that fun texture it just it has a neat it has a really neat kind of funky look hence the hipster name and um, this is not a color I normally wear but I don't know something just told me this needed to be done in this bold um, red so that's done uh, pretty cool and um, not much else I can say I I had a little help the first time I did the drop stitch pattern because I, it just sort of freaked me out that you were <laughs> dropping things intentionally. <laughs> but it actually, once you get the hang of it, um, it really wasn't hard. And it's, it's really a, a beautiful and kind of striking piece, I think, once you get it done. Okay, so um, I'm not monogamous as a knitter. I have lots of um, works in progress. And that being said, I also get new ideas in my head pretty frequently, as do most of us from all the posts on Instagram and the million podcasts I watch um, and all of that. And I have two new casts on between um, the first podcast two weeks ago and this second podcast. Um, so let me just get started with those. This first one is in one of my um, formerly Oh Joy bags with the little stitch markers on the end and gorgeous lobster canvas and these wonderful snaps. Um, and then, of course, like all of them, it folds down to have this lovely bucket with the contrast bottom. 
and a great easy bag to knit out of. So I have tons of fingering yarn and I'm not 100% sure I love making socks. Sometimes I think they're fine and other times, I don't know, it's just not necessarily my go-to. So with all of this fingering weight and um, none of it really going with each other and met most of it being single skeins, I was kind of on the lookout for something that I could do to use the single skeins, gorgeous, absolutely glorious sock yarn for projects that I could gift because I am a gift knitter often and I love sharing with my friends. Most of my friends are not knitters. Um, but it just it just makes me feel good. It's always made me feel good. Even when my kids were little to make things for them, I just, and now that they're big to make things for them, I love gifting things that I've made. That's one of my joys in life. Um, so I was looking at patterns that might work for gift knits using some of this glorious fingering. So I came across this lovely little shawl, I think maybe more of a shawlette, called the Amara. Rebecca Louise um, is the designer. Um, I am using um, a skein from my stash of, let's see, it's Leading Men Fiber Arts um, in the 801010 Merino Cashmere Nylon base and the color is Long Stocking. And this is really the simplest, simplest pattern. It has like a two row repeat. Um, it goes really quickly. It's really mindless and great for after school when my brain is mush. Um, I'm sure that it's gonna be a little, you know, more cumbersome once I do all these increases to get this frilly bottom, but I think that will really make it. Another thing I was thinking, was that it might be fun to do them with the frills in a contrasting color or pull in one of the colors in this multicolored fabric. And I think you can see while this fabric has tons and tons and tons of colors, it really is kind of watercolory in effect and kind of muted and I think will make a really pretty scarf um, with lots of different colors that people could wear. So I think it will be a perfect gift. Um, I also want to point out a little vintage knitting tool that I dug out of my stash of tools. It is, I don't think it's available anymore, although I don't know. It's a Susan Bates knitting counter called Peg It, and it literally has these little pegs and you put them in um, and they stick in place. And I've had this forever, um, but they really do stick in place. You can also use it to mark increases and decreases and all sorts of things. Um, it's kind of a fun design and I've just been using it for this project because there's such a simple repeat, I can memorize it. So I don't really need the pattern to scratch off things. So I just wanted to keep track of how many rows because you do count the rows. So anyway, really fun old kind of retro tool. Okay, um, the second thing I, I did this week um, in terms of Casson. I can't honestly remember where I first saw this pattern. I'm pretty sure it was in someone's podcast, but I don't remember whose. Um, but it was immediately the kind of pattern that I look at and think, gosh, if I could figure out how to do that, I would love that. What struck me first was the two color corrugated rib which I think I've seen on other patterns and been kind of like scared off by. Um, which brings me to one of the things I love about this knitting adventure. Um, I am, as we all are, growing as a knitter. So I'm learning new things, I'm trying new techniques, I'm challenging myself. And then I revisit things that I looked at initially in sort of awe and I realized I can do that. And that's such an exciting time when I realize that there has been this growth that I didn't even realize was happening. So that a pattern that daunted me initially is now something that I, I just can handle and I have it in my repertoire and it's fine. And that's been really, really satisfying and 
and kind of exciting. So the second pattern is a hat. Um, it's in the um, Mataroot bag, which I absolutely love. These trundle bags, they're absolutely gorgeous. These screen printed patterns. This is black with purple, really, really fun. Um, this is the Wolfy pattern. The designer is Natasha Hornby. It's this gorgeous geometric color work hat, um, as I said, with the corrugated rib brim. Um, and this is something I'm really, really, really drawn to. So I decided to do it in my new favorite yarn, more of the Quince & Co. This one is the Sport Weight Chickadee in this gorgeous orange and it's kind of a, a taupey gray. It looks grayer sometimes than it did on screen when I ordered it. I thought it was more taupey, it's kind of heathered, but I think it's still absolutely gorgeous. And I literally started this yesterday and you can see I just can't put it down. I find it absolutely amazing. And it just, certain color work patterns just absolutely shock me as they come to life and I realize I did that. And I know that sounds silly to some people who've been knitting color work for a while, but to me it's just magic. Now there's a lot of uneven, unevenness in the stitches, which from past experience I think will block out, I hope will block out, um, but that is not my biggest fear. <laughs> my biggest fear is that it will not fit, that it will not fit me or one of the many people that I gift hats to. Um, I am trying really hard to be mindful of not pulling the floats too tightly um, as I did initially and to try to make sure that there's enough give and stretch. Um, I do have an epic fail though. Um, this pattern, um, Stronger Together, which is an absolutely gorgeous pattern that um, Kelly Ode at uh, Must Love Yarn in Vermont created and donated or is donating all the proceeds to an organization that gives um, free uh, legal services to immigrants. And when there was um, the concern that, you know, our country was separating parents and children, this was something that Kelly did, which I thought was extraordinary. And I wanted to jump on the bandwagon and knit it. And it was amazing to see the pictures of the, the um, you can see there's like a father and daughter, a mother and son, and these hearts and the words stronger together. It's just a really cool pattern. It's nowhere near fitting me. Um, maybe it would fit a child. Um, the problem is, even if it did, I'm afraid the proportions would kind of be all off with the rib and stuff. So I don't know, at some point, I guess I will give it away. Right now I can't really bear to part with it. I think I used Mad Tosh for this as well but I don't, I didn't have it written down, I don't remember. Um, so that's kind of an issue. Um, I've made several um, color work cowls, which I may show on here at another point, and that's the dog coming in. Um, and I don't seem to have that issue. Maybe they're just so big anyway that it doesn't matter that I've ended up with um, you know, tighter floats or something. But for right now, with the hats, there goes the dog right in front of the camera. Um, for right now with the hats, um, the last one I did, the one I showed on the last podcast, the yellow and navy one, um, was done in a large size, or maybe I in increased sizes. And um, yeah, I don't know, I think, that worked. Um, I may have to do that with this as well. Um, there's a like a 16 stitch repeat, which I guess I could add 16 stitches and it probably wouldn't matter. The other thing I've thought of doing is going up to worsted instead of sport weight and seeing if that makes a bigger size. So we'll see, you know, I haven't panicked yet and I'm hoping that maybe when I block it, it will stretch enough and the stitches will kind of release a little. So 
I don't know, I am trying to be mindful of um, making sure that when I pull the floats, I leave more room, which I hadn't really been doing, I think, with that Stronger Together hat. So we'll see. Okay, so those are the two new whips. I have, um, I still have the ongoing uh, shawls that I showed. There were three shawls I showed in the first episode if you wanna go back and check those out. I'm not gonna show any of those again because I don't think there's been significant progress, partially because they're shawls and it just, you can't really see the progress as much and partially because I started two new whips. <laughs> so my time was um, pulled in a different direction. Okay, um, but there is one old whip, not that old, just a few weeks ago, I guess, that I didn't show last time. And I think it's a cool pattern and I know people are looking for kind of easy hat patterns and so I thought I'd show this one. It is in my fringe supply bag from Pearl Soho, um, the bright orange, which I love, um, which I think was their exclusive color. Uh, this is called Christian's Hat by Agnes Kudis. It's really simple. It's, it's just a textured hat, but it's really scrunchy and yummy. Um, this is, uh, let me pull up the, the name. This is what it, the pattern looks like. And sorry. It's in Mad Tosh. This is a DK twist. 100% merino in the pink clay optic color. That's what it looks like. It's really this sort of soft, soft pink with these black flax. I think it's just gonna be a really cozy, squishy, pretty hat for someone. So probably will end up as a gift knit. Um, so that's that. Um, again, if you're looking for a pattern, that's probably a great one um, to check out. Okay, so um, I don't think these podcasts are gonna be more than you know, 20 something minutes. I just think I probably can't talk that long to myself. <laughs> oh, there goes the dog. So I'm not really talking to myself. I'm talking to the dog. Shh, Max. Um, but I thought I would um, have a couple sections. So obviously everyone has a finished object section and a whip section, which I had. Um, and I know there is, um, Controversy is too strong a word, but I know there's disagreement about stash enhancement sections. I love them. Um, I love seeing what people have gotten. It always gives me ideas, and yes, it enables me, but it also, I found some really cool dyers that way. I found some really cool tools that way. I've certainly found amazing patterns that way. I found bags that way. Um, and, you know, as a bag maker with my little Joan Mag bag shop on Etsy. I hope that people will share if they get a bag and like it and someone else will see it and certainly word of mouth will help that. So I in turn will help the people who whose products I love and, and buy. Um, so having said that, I don't have you know a ridiculous amount. Um, there is a store, well, so before I talk about that, I will say I did not go to Rhinebeck. I've never been to Rhinebeck. I wish I'd gone to Rhinebeck. I hope to go sometime. Um, but yeah, I probably did do some Rhinebeck online shopping feeling like, you know, fear of missing out or whatever, FOMO, whatever that is. Um, so yeah, I did do some. Um, I also have a birthday in September. I have a little birthday money. Um, that I used for my big purchase, which you will see, I will save that for last. Um, okay, so I have, as I said, a son in uh, California, a son in New York. My son in New York, um, you know, is great. Both sons are have great places to go visit. And when I'm in New York, one of the places I always wanna hit is Pearl Soho. Um, I discovered it maybe four or five six years ago, I don't know. Um, and from that point on, I was totally hooked. It's 
a teeny tiny shop, but it's beautifully curated and just jam-packed with lovely things in all sorts of crafts and um, a lot of yarn and fabric and ribbons and it's just wonderful. If you're in New York, it's worth a visit. Um, but of course they have a very lovely online presence as well. And something came across when I was feeling my no Rhinebeck sadness and um, it showed that they were having a sale on their fingering, um, which I had never tried. It's called Posy. So I'm gonna show you two sets of three skeins that I got and sort of explain why I chose them. Okay, so I love me some neon. <laughs> Always have been a bright girl. I like neutrals too, as you'll see in a minute, but there's just something about a great neon. Um, this pink, these are all 75 Superwash Merino 15 Cashmere 10 Nylon. They're insanely soft. Um, it looks like a pretty high twist. Um, it's just really a nice, seems like a nice uh, fingering weight yarn. Um, the pink color is Azalea Glow. The orange is Marigold Orange, which you can see all that gorgeous tonal loveliness. And the yellow is Sour Gooseberry. And I think it's showing up pretty much. It looks a little brighter in the camera, actually, if that's possible. And then the next three are um, totally different. Um, this charcoal one is called Weather vane Gray. And the Dusty Pink is called Pink Nectar. And this tan, light tan, is called Morning Dove. The tag says that they're $29 a skein for um, 100 grams says 318 yards, so it seems like a pretty heavy fingering, almost a sport weight maybe. Um, I'm not sure. But um, they were like 15 or 20 percent off, I think 15 percent off, which was, you know, which is a really nice deal to try to, to get to try them. And one of the things I've noticed is that there are certain patterns that I really don't want to use all these heavily speckled yarns for, or variegated yarns, that I just really, I'm craving a good solid. So um, I have a ridiculous amount of yarn, I'll admit it, and fabric and all sorts of other crafty things, but I didn't have um, a good amount of just solids either to pair with things or even to make one of those patterns that looks really great um, just in solids. So that's one thing. And then the other I forgot to bring over, I will be right back. Okay, so Tuscan Knits, wonderful dyer, had an update and I couldn't resist. Um, it was just starting to become sort of fallish around here and so I was excited to get some of her deep folly colors. So this is fur, this is her fingering weight, single, uh, 100 grams, 400 yards, and the color is absolutely gorgeous. Just a tonal, purpley, yummy. It's called Ruby's Song. And this is the other single called Kragenmore. It's kind of an orangey, sorry for the dog. Orangey, browny, chestnutty, gorgeous. And then I wanted to try her Cabin Decay, which is an 80-10-10 merino cashmere nylon in the Love Struck Baby, which is kind of a soft pinky. It looks different on the camera, but um, it's really pretty. Lots of different sort of soft shades of pinks and kind of mauves. So I like that. Okay, big splurge. So. You may have noticed that one of most of our, many of our, some of our favorite dye or hedgehog yarns just came out with their own set of interchangeable needles. And it was 
not cheap and it did ship from I guess Ireland or Scotland wherever they are but I did the pre-order because I just could not resist um, everything about them was different they are in a um, kind of holographic case they are rose gold aluminum needles they're sharp they have like neon yellow cords that come in two different textures one is more firm and one is um, softer in three um, sizes each and it just yeah just went there okay so here they are on the front they have sort of a list of the sizes unfortunately the sizes are not etched on the needles which i think is always preferable but um they um, have the zipper case the only thing i felt was that the zipper sometimes is hard to close um which is a little annoying i think there are 11 sets from size well let's see it don't tell me 11 knitting needle sizes from size 2 um, to 11 in US sizes or 275 to 8 millimeter in um, European sizes and then as I said it comes with six cables three of the soft and three of the firm in the 24 inch 32 inch and 40 inch two cable stoppers um, and two tweezer tools which is how you disengage them um, the needles are really, really pretty. I'll show you what the, the cords look like and, and you can see the difference. Um, so this is a firm cord and you can see it's, you know, it's pretty much like a, not like um, chow goo, maybe more like a haya haya or even in one of the nitpicks. Um, and then there's this thing, which is completely, I think someone, one of the grocery girls called it spaghetti. It is really, really soft and will be perfect for magic loop. And I just kind of love it. I hope that, because I'm always someone who likes to get extra things, I hope they will let us um, order them individually eventually. If you are interested in these, I did notice that one of my favorite shops um, I've never been to, but that I've used a lot online is Yarn Scout in Montana, Bozeman, I think, Montana. And I noticed that they were doing pre-orders for the next round of the Hedgehog um, needles. So if it's something you are hoping to treat yourself to, um, I would head over there. And also the Hedgehog Fibers website would be a great place to look as well. Okay. I have two last things. Um, one is sort of future joy, since this is the yarn equals joy podcast. Future joy are patterns I've kind of had my eye on. Um, there is, uh, sorry, this pattern. It's a Quince and Co pattern. It's the Agnes sweater um, by Melissa Labar. And oh, there you go you can see it there's kind of a glare but um, you can't really see one of the coolest features in that picture which is that it has pockets which they've done in kind of a um, alternate color lining um, but it's it looks really simple and I think it takes um, I'm pretty sure it takes a bulky weight Let me see. so they used puffin by Quince and Co or I think they used a little of Osprey in, a, in an alternating color for the, for the pockets. I don't know why they used two different, you know, two different, um, it's interesting that they used two different types of bases. But anyway, um, it sounds like that has 112 yards. So it's, it's, a, it's a heavier yarn. Um, it just looks like a fun sweater. I don't know, I might not make it quite as cropped as that is, um, but it looks like something that would be cute. They show it really nicely styled with a skirt, which I think would be fun. Um, it just looks it just looks like a fun, easy sweater to have. Okay, so I'm almost at a half an hour. So my last section, which I will have 
we'll see. I might have it every time. I might have it every other time. Um, but I'm going to call it sharing the joy. And um, that's exactly what it is. I have yarn that I don't need, will probably not use, but it's glorious. And someone would love it and give it a good home and put it on the needles and not have it sitting there. So I'm going to give it away. So this week, I have this gorgeous skein of Haverland hand dyed. It is a hundred percent superwash merino single ply fingering. It is um, the gladiolus color. It's this gorgeous like peach base. You can't totally tell. And then it has really heavy speckling in purples and greens and pinks. And it's really, really pretty. Um, and hopefully someone could even turn that into the Amara shawl. It would be gorgeous, the one I'm making with one skein. So it's really, really pretty and will go to a good home. I have heard that we can't use the word giveaway. Don't do that in the comments because that gets all sorts of creepy creepsters who aren't interested in yarn, who just want free things. So just let me know either something you want to tell me about the podcast that you enjoyed or um, something you think I, I can, you know, add or do differently. Be gentle. This is only number two. <laughs> this is not my real job. Um, and or you could just give a comment about something that you're loving working on right now, what knitting project you're enjoying right now. And then I will um, just randomly choose someone from those comments and then I'll figure out, I guess I'll reply back and give you, um, maybe have you message me on RAV or something to give me your um, contact info so I can get this pretty skein of yarn um, winging, winging, winging is hard to say, winging its way to you. So that's the end of number two. Thank you so much. Oh, my, my stuff is all discombobulated. But anyway, thank you so much for hanging in there if you did. Um, if you want a chance to win the, um, the beautiful Haverlin yarn skein, you do need to subscribe. So subscribe and leave a comment and I will pick someone. Your odds are really good. You know, everyone was talking about the, the billion dollar whatever lotto or whatever and how the chances were so bleak that anybody would actually win it or that, you know, people would, would actually have a chance if they went and bought tickets. You have a great chance because this is brand new and I have very few people who are watching or subscribing. So you have nothing to lose, everything to gain. Go for it and you could have this lovely skein of yarn in your hands pretty soon. So anyway, enjoy the rest of your Sunday um, or whatever day this is when you're watching it. Make it a good day filled with yarn and lots of joy. Bye.